everyone is talking about the Philippines now. And by everyone, I mean the whole world. But why? Lately, people from all over the world have been talking a lot about this lively group of islands. It's caught the eye of travelers, adventurers, and investors with its beautiful beaches, fascinating history, and how things are changing in terms of money and politics. The Philippines has become a really interesting topic. Stick around as we figure out why is everyone interested in the Philippines. I'm sure you've noticed in the media that the Philippines has been making headlines recently, and many of you are likely aware of the tensions in the South China Sea. But this is not the sole reason why the Philippines is capturing everyone's attention now. Instead of using vague terms, it's important to specify who exactly is talking about the Philippines. Let's begin with investors. Why are investors all of a sudden interested in the Philippines now? As I explained in one of my videos, numerous European companies are making substantial investments in the Philippines. The European Union is a crucial trade and investment partner for the Philippines. The goods the EU buys from the Philippines include electronics, appliances, optical devices, cameras, and food. EU investments make about 30% of all foreign investment in the Philippines, creating around 500,000 jobs. EU investments in the Philippines increase by more than 150%. The EU and the Philippines have a strong relationship, especially in the recent years. The EU is the biggest investor in the Philippines, and EU investments have had positive effects on the country and its people. In 2020, EU investments in the Philippines reached over 200 billion euros. European companies in the Philippines employ 500,000 Filipino workers, which helps support the livelihood of more than 3 million people. Overall, there are about 800 medium to large EU companies in the Philippines, and 60 of them made a total of 20 billion euros in sales in 2020, which is about 5% of the country's economy. What about tourists and expats? Why are they increasingly choosing the Philippines over other Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia? There are many provinces, not just the well-known tourist destinations like Palawan, but also other lesser-known destinations like Tagaytay, Rizal, and many other provinces where a wide range of activities are offered. As I mentioned previously, that the Philippines has a very rich culture. Nearly all provinces have their own unique culture, not just the major regions like Luzon, Mindanao, and Visayas, but each province in each region has its own unique culture. For example, each province in Mindanao has its own unique culture. And the same goes for the other regions like Luzon and Visayas. The Philippines was colonized by Spain for 400 years, so it's safe to say that finding historical sites in the Philippines would not be an issue. Vigan is an ideal tourist destination for historical explorers. Paracay, Bohol, and Palawan are ideal destinations for nature and wildlife enthusiasts, and needless to say, the provinces near Metro Manila offer more or less the same activities that the well-known destinations offer. What's unique about the Philippines is that you have many options for everything. You can easily find cheap restaurants and accommodations in different provinces. If you're on a low budget, you need to do a thorough research. You need to find which places offer cheap accommodations, food, and so on. Spa resorts are abundant in the Philippines. And again, they're not limited to Boracay and Palawan. Even provinces near Manila offer more or less the same. How about America? America was not interested, or at least was not focused on the Philippines, especially during the Duterte administration. But now, American investors and policy makers are making significant investment in the Philippines. Is this shift possibly linked to tensions in the South China Sea? Or because the Philippines offers great investment opportunities? On March 11th, American companies announced to invest more than $1 billion in the Philippines. U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo had a two-day trade and investment mission in the Philippines. 
the first of its kind. The delegation includes executives from 22 companies, including United Airlines. The investments will span areas like solar energy, electrical vehicles, and digitalization. Furthermore, the U.S. has committed $80 million to infrastructure investment at the five current bases, which are the Antonio Bautista Air Base in Palawan, Basa Air Base in Pampanga, Fort Magsaysay in Novi Siha, Benito Ibuena Air Base in Cebu. These spaces, an expanded part of the defense agreement between the two countries, will allow the U.S. to approach Taiwan from the south in the event of war and acts as another part of its China containment strategy. The U.S.-Philippine Joint Military Exercise, Balikatan 2023, was held across the Southeast Asian country. This was the largest exercise in the history of the Philippines. About 9,000 service members took part in the 2022 exercise. Last year, more than 5,000 Philippine troops and more than 12,000 U.S. troops participated. The decision to allow America to use these four places probably happened when the U.S. officials visited the Philippines in August 2022. Having U.S. troops at these new bases is part of the U.S. plan for the Indo-Pacific region and it gives them more influence over what happens in the Taiwan Strait and in the South China Sea. The U.S. has a plan to make a base on Balakbak Island. This could help with support and supplies for any future military action in the South China Sea. Three of the new bases might be mainly for the U.S. military to deal with any issues in the Taiwan Strait in the south. This goes along with their bases to the north of Taiwan, like the ones in Okinawa in the southern Japan. So, these new bases in the Philippines will fill in the gap in the south, which is crucial for the American strategy to control the situation in the region. The relationship between the United States and the Philippines has been historically strong, often described as a special relationship, originating from the fact that the Philippines was a colony of the United States between 1898 and 1946. The Philippines is one of the oldest Asian partners of the United States and a strategically major non-NATO ally. How about foreign vloggers? Why are many foreign vloggers choosing to relocate to the Philippines now? Reason number one, and this is the main reason. Filipino viewers. Vloggers discovered the perfect recipe for success on YouTube. And that is Filipino viewers. Reason number two, affordable living. Vlogging can be expensive, especially if it's your full-time job. But the Philippines offers an affordable cost of living. Many foreign vloggers find that they can stretch their budgets while creating great content. What's unique about the Philippines is that there are options for everything. For example, if you generate a decent income from your YouTube channel, then you can live a Western lifestyle in BGC. If your YouTube channel does not generate enough income, then you can live in the province where rent is generally cheap. Number three, warm and welcoming people. One of the main reasons uh, vloggers come to the Philippines is the warm and welcoming Filipino people. Their hospitality and friendly nature make vlogging a delightful experience. Filipinos are extremely sociable people. They love to engage in conversations with foreigners. And most Filipinos are not camera shy because they are used to socializing with foreigners. Adventure opportunities. Adventure is always around the corner in the Philippines. From thrilling sports to challenging hikes. It's a playground for vloggers seeking adventurous experiences, vibrant festivals. The Philippines is known for its vibrant and colorful festivals, each offering rich and unique stories and traditions. Vloggers love capturing these uh, celebrations. 
Food Adventures Filipino cuisine is a delicious blend of flavors. Foreign vloggers come to taste, share, and explore the diverse dishes from adobo to halo halo. Hidden Gems The Philippines is full of hidden gems. Vloggers enjoying uncovering these lesser known spots and sharing them with their audience. Island Hopping Island hopping is a vlogger's dream come true. With thousands of islands to explore, vloggers can create captivating content while hopping from one island to another. Ease of communication. English is widely spoken in the Philippines. Vloggers won't have difficulty finding audience for their content because Filipinos understand and can communicate in English very well. How about Israelis? Why are they suddenly interested in the Philippines? In the past few months, there has been a significant trend of Israelis selling their belongings and relocating to the Philippines. The Philippines voted in favor of the United Nations General Assembly Resolution No. 181, recommending the establishment of an independent Jewish state. Therefore, the Philippines was instrumental in the birth of Israel as a free and independent state. The first bilateral agreement between the two countries was signed all the way back in August 1951. Since then, 13 other agreements have been inked, including those abolishing transit and visitors visa, cultural, educational, and academic research. In 2020, Israel ranked 25th as the Philippines trading partner out of 225 partners, 28th export market, and 31st import supplier. In 2022, the total volume of trade in goods between the two countries was $600 million, about 30 billion pesos. By 2025, the trade between the Philippines and Israel is expected to go up to $2 billion, primarily driven by investments on agriculture water management and tourism. Filipinos are one of the largest groups of immigrant workers in Israel. Of the approximately 300,000 workers in Israel, over 10% or at least 30,000 are Filipinos. The Philippines has become one of the top tourist destinations for the Israeli people in the last few years. 15,000 Israeli tourists visited the Philippines between January and August 2023. Also, the topic of Mindanao secession has been covered in the news lately. To understand why the vast majority of people in Mindanao seek separation, you need to understand how Mindanao is the way it is today. Mindanao, the second largest island in the Philippines after Luzon, and seventh most populous island in the world, located in the southern region of the archipelago. The island is part of an island group of the same name that also includes its adjacent islands, namely the Sulu Archipelago. In the Treaty of Paris in 1898, Spain sold the entire Philippine archipelago to the United States for $20 million. In the early 1900s, the Commonwealth government, led by Americans, encouraged citizens from Luzon and Visayas to migrate to Mindanao, consisting mostly of Ilocanos, Cebuanos, and Ilongos. Mindanao was peaceful and increasingly progressive in the post-war period, post-Japan-Philippine War period including the 1950s and 60s. Ethnic tensions were minimal and there was essentially no presence of secessionist groups in Mindanao. Under Ferdinand Marcos's administration, Christian groups began to settle in Mindanao, displacing many locals. The population boom resulted in conflicts as the original owners sought their ancestral land domains. The Marcos administration encouraged new settlers who had emigrated to Mindanao to form a militia, which was eventually called the Ilaga. Anecdotal evidence states that the Ilaga often committed human rights abuses by targeting the Moro and Lumad people, as well as attempting to seize additional territory. Mindanao's economy accounts for 14% of the country's GDP. Agriculture, forestry, and fishing make up more than 40% of Mindanao's market, being the country's largest supplier of major crops, such as pineapples and bananas. The core issue in Mindanao is not about 
ethnicity or religion, but economics. If Mindanao was well developed and prosperous, there wouldn't be a need for rebellion. So why do you think everyone is talking about the Philippines now? 